So today we're gonna take apart. So today we're gonna take apart this Apple laptop. Welcome to my garage. Uh, I'm Anthony, and this is Bad Idea Metals. Um, so the weather took a turn, and it's really cold, and so it's kind of scared us off to the to the garage again. Um, I haven't recorded in here since last summer, since I got that shed built, and so uh, it's a little bit messy, as uh, this really isn't where I try to film anymore. But with the weather being bad and it's super cold, snow flying everywhere, um, I'm gonna work in here where it's nice and warm and my fingers don't freeze. So today, we're gonna take apart this Apple laptop. This is an original MacBook Pro. Um, it's about about 13 years old, I think, 2006. So roughly uh, 15 years old at this point. So uh, this is an old AMD video Intel processor. I think it was a dual core. Um, don't know a whole lot of specs on this unit, but this one, this one was donated for this purpose. First thing first, let's take this battery off. Fifteen inch MacBook Pro rechargeable battery. Very nice. A lot of times, Mac equipment will either put the uh, RAM right underneath the keyboard. Uh, I did a a quick look I didn't see that the RAM actually was under the keyboard it could have been but I didn't see a quick and easy way to get the keyboard up so I don't know if this is actually where the RAM is gonna be and that's where the RAM is now this should be DDR2 let me get a little tray out for these screws This is a one gig DDR2 stick, and there's two sticks. I wonder if the second one's gonna match. Probably will. This one is also one gig of DDR2. So we have two gigs of DDR2. We'll set that over here with our screws. So, this is, this should be a predominantly aluminum based uh, housing. So that's good. Um, as I scrap aluminum, um, the aluminum price is kind of low, but uh, for clean aluminum like these, I still get about, I don't know, 30 to 50 cents per pound, depending on a lot of things. Throw that in with our aluminum. All right, let's take a look and see what we're at now. Okay. All right, so the keyboard had a connector that connected to the motherboard. Well, I see a power button right there. The mouse has got some gold contacts, which is nice to see. The keyboard, this is going to be mostly aluminum. Um, the uh, eBay has people buying these. They, they say that there's silver content in some of the components. Um, I have not successfully sold a keyboard or a, a collection of keyboards on eBay. So I don't, I don't know if I believe that there's enough silver that it has people excited whenever they drop on eBay. However, I have taken these keyboards over to the local recyclers and they buy these at, um, at dirty aluminum price. So it's better than scrap steel price, which is what everything generally goes at if they don't buy it at a specific price like copper or aluminum. So these will go as dirty aluminum. Um, and if I am totally wrong and you can explain to me how there's silver in these keyboards, then please, by all means, I'd love to learn where that silver is actually located. But this is actually a pretty fun looking keyboard. It's got the, the nice low profile keys. It's got the apples on the, on the control keys right there. 
or on the on the command keys. So I may actually keep this as kind of a little souvenir. I don't take apart very many apples. They retain their value too well. Used apples don't find their way to me very, very often. So you got a lot of captain's tape everywhere. Helps keep things secure. It's a little more heat resistant, static resistant. You got your Apple Super Drive. You got an old hard drive. 100 gigabytes, man. To think that that was large. I got my two terabyte drive on my desk as a backup, so that's great fun. So you got right here, you got a few BGA chips. These look a lot like uh, the RAM configuration for a video card. So the, the onboard video, this is probably the RAM for it. And I wouldn't be surprised if we looked behind here. Actually, Apple's didn't put their video back there. It's over here on the side. So this might be the GPU side, and then that would be the CPU side. That's just a guess. I haven't gotten that far into this yet, so. But that looks like the memory modules for the graphics. Again, the, the memory modules for the, the main system are right here. With these tiny screws, do what you can not to strip them. There really is no forgiveness on that. Yeah, you can drill them out and pour them out with a small bit, but it's still challenging. Got what looks like a, a battery. Here's your CMOS battery, probably. CR2025. So, yep, that's what it is. It's a little nickel cadmium battery. Super drive in hand. You've got some gold fingers here. Nothing super amazing. These are going to be mostly aluminum. There will be some steel clips. And then there's the components inside. You've got a few motors, and you've got some some gold leads on their on the wires so we'll save that and tear that apart with all of our drives another day while we're pulling drives out let's go ahead and take off this hard drive so you've got gold fingers right here and uh, I'll take this this driver panel off So these bodies are, are aluminum. There's some gold fingers down here where the board interfaced with the drive itself. And a lot of times there's gonna be some gold, like you can see it right there. There's some gold contact points right there, um, as well as right here, which would have interfaced with those. So there's gold contacts. This is a nice BGA. I'm sure there's gonna be something in that. Uh, take some of this off. There's a Another smaller BGA here, and this looks like a, a module of, of memory right there. So my guess is you're gonna find gold bond wire in these two, and probably that third one. There's gold on this, there's gold on these, there's gold in these fingers here. Um, but the, for the most part, the this isn't a fully sublimated board. This, this board was done out of copper instead of the gold um, flashing. So really, we're just after the pins then, and the chips. So we'll set that off to the side. We'll process that later. We'll get this gold off later and we'll get the gold pins after we've opened up the drive. While inside, there's gonna be a little bit of gold contact points, but uh, really the only thing on the inside that's really interesting are your magnets. So when it comes to hard drives, I like the boards and sometimes the pins are worth going after, but that's really it for the, for the drives. Throw that with my drives. All right, let's continue on. So this is a non-ferrous piece. You find these a lot in laptops. Um, it's non-ferrous, meaning it's not gonna be magnetic. However, um, the recyclers that I take my aluminum to, they hate this stuff. This doesn't really mean it's really true aluminum. Aluminum, if you were to put a pressure on it, it would bend. This will break. So it's metal, but it's kind of the worst most useless kind of metal ever. It basically gives uh, your computer a spot to screw uh, components together with. Um, it's a really lightweight. Yeah, it has aluminum in it, but it's, it's a composite of a whole bunch of things and it's garbage. So I put it in my general metal scrap bin. Um, it's not gonna sell as aluminum, although it is mostly aluminum. I think this is the intriguing thing for me. 
taking apart a laptop is like a puzzle. Uh, you got to figure out what goes first and then what comes after. So here's our battery connection. I love these. Let's see if I can pull this out. Oh, golly. Give to me the connector. It got taped down pretty good. But I think I got it now. So I really like these connections because they're always such thick metal, whether it be a nickel or a copper plate underneath. So you can see there's all that gold plating on these panels. And that's where the battery connected. The fans, I just sell. I will take the head off that one though and save that. But the fans, I sell. Uh, there's a fan rate of about 12 cents a pound. They call it electronic motors. There's our motherboard. Really nice small little motherboard. You've got what looks like the CPU right here. This is an Intel, two gigahertz, with two megabytes on the cache, two megs of cache, and it's a 667 bus speed. So this is a, I think it's a core, core two. Um, you got these two really useless chipsets here. One's in the north bridge. I believe this, the other might be the south bridge. Oh, just some heat tape. You got your gold cornered VGA right here. This is probably one of the most valuable chips. Um, as this is a VGA, the, the CPU is not going to have any real value to it. They might have something in there, but for the most part, if it doesn't have gold pins, uh, they really aren't going to have much value. So that is what I'm after. You got gold pins inside on the memory slots. You'll have gold pins inside every one of these peripheral slots. You got a DVI connector. Your RJ45, which is your network, is going to have some, some gold pins in there. This is a 6-pin Firewire, a uh, 6-pin USB. It's going to be a little hard on the video, but you've got all of these extra pin sockets for for all the different inner inner connectivity systems you've got all these all these sockets for for all of your ribbon cables so those will have some really tiny fine uh fine pins um so working with laptops you're going to want to get those off if you can they all add up eventually um that's actually why i cook my boards because uh it takes too long to try to get all those off otherwise. I'm um, trying to get pliers down there and peel them all off. That solder is not going to just let go so easily. So so we'll set that in a box that I use to uh, collect all my circuit boards. Some plastic housing. So this... It's basically just the mounting point for as many components as can screw down to this garbage aluminum mess of whatever. Uh, it's called a catcher, apparently. So this is the catcher. Hmm. And uh, it's really fragile. Brittle. Brittle's the right word. It's really brittle. And now I have a clean aluminum panel. Hmm. <laughs> So there's going to be a light back here coming off of that, that back plate. So in, when the monitor turns on, it was putting light throughout this entire surface so that the front would get its light. But these apples have this, uh, this transparent piece so that way uh, when the, the monitor's light is on, you can get the light through it and it lights up for everybody to see you're running an apple. A little bit of marketing for them, but that's very interesting that that's how they lit it. Okay, so we'll come back to this in just a second. Let's see if there's anything here we need to pull off. I have no steel on any of these connections, so that's good news. That means this is a complete piece of aluminum. However, this would be a... It's in good enough shape that I may actually keep this 
and turn it into some sort of like a little nightlight type deal. That would be kind of a fun thing. Okay, I love these. There are gold fingers across the entire surface. And then there's gonna be gold corners and then all the soldering points for your MLCCs and your IC chips. They're all gold contacts. So one thing I've never been able to understand what these little tabs are. If anybody watching this video can never, can help me understand what those do, they obviously they take the signal off of that circuit and put it across the matrix. You got all these these pixels on the other side and that's how that signal gets transferred over. But what what I don't understand is what this this black bar is, whether it's some sort of like a signal cleansing magnetic type or or even an iron bar kind of like what a what the emi rings do for um for power signals and stuff i don't know what those black bars do so if anybody knows i'd love to know but uh the the ribbons themselves are to pull the information off of these control boards and distribute that across the pixels that are on the other side of the screen. Not much to it other than uh, some, some pretty interesting gold contacts that may not always exist in all laptops, but in general, that's pretty typical for a standard laptop. Um, the battery itself, I didn't take apart yet. I've got a whole bunch of batteries. I don't have anywhere to store the 18650s right now, so I'm not taking apart my batteries that I've got right now. When I do open it up and take it apart, I, I'll show what's in there, but that'll be part of a battery video in the future. Yeah, that's just about it. If you've got any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments below. And uh, I look forward to uh, seeing you guys in the next video. Thanks very much. Have a good night.